Do you know what I've noticed? It's, it's been quite a while since we've had a Tool Time Tuesday on this channel. The tools we're gonna to talk about today are basic leather work tools. And I just need to preface this video by saying that I am very inexperienced in leather work. So why then would I make this video? When I first started making leather sheaths, I didn't have any of the tools that I'm gonna show you in this video. Also, when I first started making leather sheaths, I didn't enjoy it, I, I hated it. But now, now that I've kind of found the, at least using these tools, I really, really have begun to enjoy leather work. I actually look forward to every sheath I have to do. I used to hate it, used to not enjoy it at all, thought it was terrible, but now I just, I, I'm looking around for other leather projects I can do because I find it so, it's almost like relaxing, meditative. It's, it's just, it's such a different change from being in the shop here, but it's also nice because I can just, you know, watch TV, listen to a podcast, or just chill out, listen to the radio, and do my leather work, and I really, really Really like it. So a few months ago I was making some leather sheaths and I thought you know what I might as well take some video footage. So I've done that. I haven't had a chance to edit it until now uh, but I kind of smooshed it all together. I'll show you the tool, how I use it and we're gonna go through the process of a very very simple uh, kind of a wallet style leather sheath. So it doesn't have a belt loop or anything like that. Mostly I want to convey the different tools, how I use them and why I like them so much. So hopefully we can uh, make some sense of this. Also one little thing do you hear chickens in the background? Yeah, we've got chickens in our garage right now. Uh, they're gonna be heading out to the chicken coop soon, but right now they're hanging with me, so I hope, I hope that isn't too distracting for you. Okay, so starting off, I like to use an X-Acto knife to cut out my leather. I know there's a lot of specific leather cutting knives. Um, I've had a lot of people say, well, why don't you make your own knife? I have. I just really like how thin the X-Acto blades are. And I find with these X-Acto knives, there's enough, they're robust enough that I can still use some pressure, uh, but they're not clunky like a regular sized uh, razor knife, right? I mean, I've got some real fine motor control there. And then with the, the blades going to a real fine point, it kind of makes pulling a radius easier. So this is my method of choice for cutting my leather pieces. You can use what you want and there's a lot of personal preference involved with what tools you use to do this. Uh, so I'm cutting basically three pieces out for the sheath, a front, a back, and then this part here that looks like a U, that is the welt. And essentially that gets sandwiched in between, creating a little space for the knife to sit into. And then the idea behind that as well is that you're not going to be, uh, you know, you're not gonna have the blade coming in contact with stitches at all, it's gonna come in contact with the leather. So now we've got this cut out, I'm gonna use this tool right here and this is called an edge beveler. Uh, there's different sizes so they'll cut larger or smaller radiuses and essentially it just kind of takes that edge off and kind of puts a rounded uh, rounded edge on the leather. Now we do some of this stuff before glue up because it's just easier to get at right now. Uh, we'll end up using this later on in the build and we'll take a look at it then as well. Really really great tool that was one that I, I didn't know if I should get or not. I ended up buying it and absolutely thrilled with it. I, I, it makes life much, much easier. So right here, I'm just marking out where the welt is. That way I can make sure I get glue where I need it, but I don't have a bunch of extra glue inside the sheath. Uh, I find it just kind of helps to mark that out for glue up. Now this tool that we're using here is called a stitching groover. Now this is actually a multifunction tool. There's two inserts. The first one I use just for marking out where my grooves or my stitches are gonna go. And the second one we're gonna take a look at in just a minute. It will actually cut a groove in. So you see it's got that arm that kind of rests on the outside of the leather and follows the contour. That makes it really nice to get, you know, obviously those stitches will match the curvature of the leather. And this tool just makes it really, really handy for that. So this tool basically just lightly kind of scratches in, not really a scratch, kind of impress is in the line that the stitches are going to go into. Now I always take care coming to the points like that or any corner where I'm gonna be changing directions because I don't wanna overshoot that because a lot of times these marks that we put in, like this mark here, uh, that could be fairly permanent. So I always like to, you know, I go from side to side, back and forth to make sure that I get that point nice together. Once we've got that marked out, we're gonna switch out that insert, and this insert is actually the cutting tool. This is a little groove cutter, a stitching groove cutter, and it's kind of sharpened up. You see there's a little circle there, and this is a very, very satisfying tool to use. So essentially, we've got our, our groove laid out with that line. Now we're gonna go back over top of it without adjusting that arm, and we're gonna actually cut a little groove into the leather. And with this tool, you know, being the way that it's designed, it follows that mark that we laid out, and that way we've got really nice, even, concentric, grooves cut into our sheaths. And that is where our stitches are gonna go into. 
So one tool I'm just gonna show right here is a simple spring clamp. Now I take these clamps, I glue pieces of leather onto them. That way when I'm holding leather together, I'm not gonna leave weird impressions in it while I'm gluing up, uh, you know, when I'm gluing sheaths up and stuff like that. Now the cement I use is a water-based cement and I have these little flexible applicators for, for applying it. Uh, there's a lot of different ways you can glue up. A lot of people don't like this water-based stuff. I do, it is a little bit more forgiving, um, but you do have to let it dry a little longer. And I also like it because it doesn't smell bad. I know some contact cements are really terrible. This stuff has no scent whatsoever and it's water-based. I've been really, really happy with it. Uh, but again, personal preference, you know, there's a lot of different options out there. And we glue that up and then take our little clamps, clamp this whole thing together. I usually let it dry for about an hour or so, or sometimes I'll try and do this and leave it overnight. Okay, so I kind of forgot to film a whole bunch of this, which was a bit of a fail on my part. But what I will typically do is glue the welt to the front side of the sheath. I will leave the other side uh, off at this, this time and I will go ahead and put all my stitching holes in. Now to do that, I use a stitching chisel. This here is called a diamond stitching chisel and if you'll notice the, the prongs on there are actually kind of diamond shaped. And this is a two prong chisel and they also make a single prong as well as like uh, three, four, five. I've got a six prong, which is really, really handy if you've got longer runs of straight. The nice thing about these is that they evenly space the holes and then uh, they just, they're very quickly at putting a hole through the outer layer of your sheath and the welt. After that point, I will glue them together and then I'll go through with a stitching all. We're gonna take a look at that in one moment. But real quickly here, just to give you an idea, uh, I use a wooden mallet, put this in my stitching holes. I always start at a joint where two different uh, stitching lines, stitching grooves come together and work out from there. Now this here is the stitching all. What I do now is I use this after I've glued the welt and the front to the back. Now that we've got this whole sheath glued together, I have put in a stitching groove on the back, but I haven't got holes there yet. There are no stitching holes. And the reason I don't do that is because sometimes it's hard to get the holes to line up from the front to the back. And uh, I used to drill these out uh, with a drill press and I would end up with holes that weren't inside of my stitching grooves and it was a real pain in the butt. So I discovered this little stitching all and basically what I'll do is I'll come through the front side where I've already got my holes marked in. They're all spaced out and everything. And I'll just carefully start pushing it until I see that needle poking up through in the stitching groove. The nice thing about this is if I need to change the angle a little bit, I can certainly do that. Sometimes I'll have to skew it a little to the left, a little to the right. Um, but it's nice because I can make sure that all the holes going through on both sides are in their stitching grooves. And it's super handy. This is one of the funner parts, except when you poke your finger, you need to be a little bit careful. Uh, but this stitching all really makes it handy. Andy, and now I've got nice holes for my stitches that are centered in the stitching grooves. Really, really slick. Now we've got all that done, we're ready to sew it up. I use a waxed nylon thread. Again, different people like different products. This is what I like. And uh, we're gonna thread through some needles here. I'll show you a quick little trick for threading a needle. Uh, basically, we put the thread through the needle, pull that tag end a little bit longer than the length of the needle. Uh, so hopefully this kind of makes sense. You see how that tag in there is a little bit longer than the needle itself. Now what I'm going to do is take the live end and I'm actually going to push the needle through it. Oh, here I'm just making an adjustment, make a little more, a little extra tag line. But this is the live end here and I push the needle through that. So we've got a little loop there. And from there, we're going to take the tag end and put it into that loop. So I'm just going to stick it in there and then we'll take that live end Oh yeah, show it again, Jeremy, why don't you? Now we'll pull that all the way through. And that way we've got uh, a way to keep that kind of captive. It's not gonna fall out, but we don't have a knot that we're pulling through. So again, I'll show it to you real quick. Take the tag end, make it longer than the needle. Take your needle, push it through the live end, basically the exact same length as your needle. Run that down. Run that right down the needle there. Put the tag end through pull the live end, and voila. This here is my homemade stitching pony. I've got a video about that if you wanna check it out. I'm actually gonna be making another one soon. Uh, there's some certain, this one's kind of nice, but there's a few things that limit it. Uh, it's not overly adjustable as far as thickness goes. And I also like to have some leather pads on there. Just, I've had a few times when I'm making a sheath and I get some weird lines from clamping it down, so. One project coming up soon is going to be another stitching pony. I don't know what this stitch is called. I'm not sure what it is, but essentially what I'll do is go through one hole, pull it out. I always kind of pull it down and out of the way and then stick the other side through that exact same hole and give them a good yank. Now the nice advantage to waxed thread is that when you do pull it like that, it binds against itself and in the hole. 
So typically I find it actually stays quite tight. You know, I give it one good yank and it doesn't loosen off that much uh, as I'm going around. Um, and with this nylon thread, I find that it breaks way less than, I was using cotton thread before, and I was breaking that stuff all the time. Uh, this nylon, actually, I haven't had it break yet, so that's the reason I use it. I really like it. And then also, when we're done, you know, we tie it off, I can melt this, because it's nylon, you know, you heat it up with a lighter, the ends kind of shrivel up, smack it with a hammer, and then boom, you've got that, not that tied off. And I know there's a lot nicer ways you can finish off, uh, you know, your sewing, ways you can hide it within the leather. I haven't tried too many of those yet. I would definitely like to. It's one of these things, just like knife making, always trying to get better. Uh, but I'm just kind of sharing, you know, what I'm doing currently. Now this tool is called a safety beveler, and this is one that I bought that uh, I don't know if I'd necessarily buy it again. I don't use it all that much. For the things that I use it for, I could use a razor blade just as well. Uh, but the one nice thing is that it has, has kind of a little bit more control to the depth of your cut. It's just got very inexpensive, very thin replaceable blades, and I just usually use that to bring all the edges up before I grind, grind everything nice and flush. And I just jump out to my... Uh, my belt grinder, I use a 80 grit aluminum oxide. I have belts specific just for leather work, so I won't, you know, take a belt from grinding steel and then start grinding leather. I think that'd just be a mess. And uh, just kind of shape it all, mostly just getting all these edges. We basically got three pieces of leather. We're just getting them all nice and even and flush. Now at this point, at this point, we're gonna use our edge beveling tool again, and this is, uh, I love this. There's a lot of tools in leatherworking that are so satisfying because it's like, ooh, yeah, that looks good. Like, check that out. Is that not satisfying to see? And very repeatable, very nice, clean, consistent edges. Just ah, so much fun. That's one of the th reasons I think that I find leatherworking so enjoyable is because it's very satisfying to see these tools work. And uh, when you have the right tools, it makes such a difference. It's like one pass, you've got a nice finish. Before I used to try and do that with a straight razor, you know, razor blade, and I'd be fighting it and it'd look cattywampus and big chunks out of here and not enough over there. I tell you, leatherworking is one of those things where the right tools can make a huge, huge difference. Now we're moving on to staining or dyeing our leather. Lots of different ways you can do it. A lot of people actually dye their leather before they glue it up as well. Um, you know, there's, there's so many different ways to go about this stuff. This is just how I'm doing it right now. Tyndall Knives, he uses dye in a spray gun and he actually sprays his leather and gets a really nice consistent finish that way. So now that the dye is dried, I'm gonna put a finish on it. This is professional finish, clear matte. Again, so many options, so many preferences. Do what you like. I like this stuff, it works fairly well. I've had good luck with it. And uh, it's very uh, you know, easy to work with, smells just fine. And uh, let that dry for about a day and then we'll come back and just uh, burnish the edges. This here is called a burnishing tool. It's basically a piece of wood. It's got a taper on the one end and then some grooves. I'll take some beeswax and this is actually wax from the bees that we have on our land. So that's pretty cool, like organic beeswax, not that it matters. And then we go with our burnishing tool and essentially we're just rubbing very, very quickly to kind of shine up. It kind of smooths out the edges and then it adds a nice shine to it. And it just kind of gives it a nicer look and kind of seals it up a little bit too. It also does a good job at protecting it. You're just kind of rubbing it really fast. There's lots of different things you can do. Some people use glass. I had a Teflon rod that I used for a long time. I've had wooden dowels. Actually, I used to always burnish in my metal lathe, and that was kind of what I used the metal lathe for most, was burnishing leather. Uh, I since sold the metal lathe, and I have to do it by hand here. But again, I think that's maybe one of the reasons why I like leather work so much, is that I do my leather work entirely manual. There's no power tools in here. You know, I could be sitting alone in the sun without any electricity and make leather sheaths. And that's what I really enjoy about it. And essentially there is the finished product. A very, very simple wallet style sheath. Uh, fits really nice to the knife. Now one of the longer parts I find when I'm making sheaths is actually coming up with a template that works well. I've had a lot of different iterations for different sheaths. And that to me is the hardest part. I typically do all my uh, templates for my sheaths in cardboard or paper. And then once I have one that works really well, I'll transfer it to something like some heavier cardboard. Um, I've even made a few of them out of Kydex that I know I'm gonna be making a lot of. That way I've got a really nice rigid template. I'll spend a lot of time making that template really nice and that way it's just much quicker to lay out and cut through 
the leather. Now, obviously one thing we didn't cover is decorative leather work, like stamping and tooling the leather. Now I do have a lot of tooling tools, but they were my dad's, he used to be quite into leather work, but I don't do them on any of my sheaths yet. A lot of that stuff is very, very personal. I've seen a lot of sheaths that I would love it, except for the tooling to me, to me can kind of sometimes be gaudy. Not always, but sometimes. I think sometimes it's done very well, but sometimes it's just like, wow, 1970s call them, they want their knife sheath back. Having said that, I have a lot of respect for guys that do amazing tooling work, and I am messing with it, right? All my little scraps of, of leather, I'm kind of taking them and uh, practicing getting my patterns in there. It can be a way to really dress up a sheath and just add so much to it. But again, I think that's a little bit more beyond the basics. So this video, I just want to show you super simple way you can make a sheath. Now obviously, you'll have to add a few more steps if you're going to do a belt loop. Typically, I'll do that from one side of the leather, fold it over, stitch it up. A lot of people will rivet it. Like I said, there's so many different ways you can go about leather work, but I finally found doing it this way is something that I enjoy, and I think the biggest change was having the right tools to do it. So, hope that helps you out, guys. Hopefully, if you've been thinking about doing leather work, but you're like, what should I buy? Honestly, everything that you saw in this video, that's what I would recommend. Now, I get all of my leather stuff from Tandy Leather. That's where you can find Tandy Leather. Now, I have no affiliation with Tandy whatsoever. I know they're not the cheapest place to buy leather and tools, but do your research, look around. I also get my leather from Tandy, and the local stores that I shop at have some really good deals sometimes, especially if you're willing to buy like a half of a shoulder or a large chunk of leather. A lot of times you can get that for a really, really good deal. Anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed this edition of Tool Time Tuesday. Something I'm really excited about is leather work, and even though I'm not very good at it, it is such a fun little uh, craft to do. If you like this video, guys, please do give it a thumbs up. If you have not subscribed to the channel already, please consider doing so. And as always, I thank you so much for watching. Cheers. I hope the chickens weren't too distracting. Hello chickens.